Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another episode of SDGC. It's Thursday, July 29th. I can't believe this year is fucking halfway over now. Like, it, it's gone by so fast, Don't it feels like. Don't make me think I, about time I, right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's more than halfway over. How? Oh, my God. Right? Like, it's so almost like, August. So, so consider this. Before we launch an intro, intro, into introductions here, we were all joking in January about how E3 is only, you know, six months away. E3 was two months ago month and a well, half oh. be a kind to me still, we're, we're getting there like i i i don't like it i don't like it at all my i'm gonna be 41 on monday um oh, and i'm i just i don't know what the fuck is happening so so i want to be clear for everybody who's watching live and not listening on podcast services i have allowed our guest the 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 very awesome ash paulson to to beanie himself up uh, nice. uh just just for this episode just for this ep so only so this. only it was only very this episode. it was very kind of john to let someone show him up on how to properly wear a beanie on his right. own show Can we uh mute finn or somehow boot him off the live no, show please i refuse no to. we I mean, can't to do that fair, i think there's room for both because you know you're you're wearing a slightly different colored beanie than, than mine and mine is also a Parappa beanie, just making it objectively not only different, but better. So yes. I think it's really is. John's that is a Parappa beanie. I was See, wondering John, why that looks so familiar. John, John yeah, used to have a Parappa. cool, iconic beanie from Enter the Gungeon, but he decided to just go generically. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know where it's at. It's we need to in get house. you into a purple SDGC <laughs> logo beanie because the I'm working the, on it. the beanie that's the color of like a, a, a late 90s desktop case is not. Not working, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have uh, so we have already mentioned our guest, but uh, Ash Paulson from uh, Good Vibes Gaming is here. Um, unfortunately, Steve Bowling can't make it. But Steve, don't you worry about it. We'll get you on later. Uh, Steve's been on before. Steve's my boy. We go way back. He's um, sick of me. We're, we're we're on together three days a week. I'm sure he's sick of talking. I, talking. I, I yeah, like I was gonna make a joke about how I don't blame him, but I always enjoy podcasting with you, so I can't back that up. <laughs> um, Ash Paulson from Good Vibes Gaming is here. Ash, I got to tell you, man, um, I have been uh, a listener of GVG since the beginning. Um, and, you know, I followed you guys over from Game, from Game Explain, and you guys are crushing it over there, man. Like, oh, my God. Like, well, holy, congratulations. You. You're giving Thanks. off a lot of good vibes. That's what we're trying to Ball do, gaming. man. It's uh, it, it's a bit of a slow burn. You know, well, and we, well it, it, I say that, but we actually have been able to grow quite a bit in our first year we've been able to more than double our subscriber base from when we launched uh in our first year that's and now it feels like we're kind of you know going to a slow burn a bit but that's you know that's what happens that's the way it is and i always have to constantly remind myself you know gx has, ha has been been around for over 10 years so yeah. we're, we're still in our first year we're just growing incrementally and uh but you know onward and upward uh slow but steady and, uh, you know, in the meantime, we seem to be doing something that people enjoy. And that's what's most important uh, is that we seem to be, to be at least bringing a little light into people's lives. And that's what we're all about. And uh, we've built an incredible community that I'm so proud of. Uh, just just the most wonderful community of people who are just they think like we do. They, they just they value inclusivity and, and kindness and none of the toxic bullshit that that permeates gaming these days that some of which we're going to talk about later today in this episode unfortunately but yep. people love what we're doing to, to a degree it seems and that's why we're going to keep doing it as we just grow and hopefully get bigger and bigger what well, i can we I, if oh, oh, go ahead finn i'm sorry i was just going to say uh, before we get into it what can you why don't you tell people where they can follow you in the show and and track your growth Right. Well, we are primarily uh, YouTube is our main platform and we are fully Patreon funded. So uh, you can find us on patreon.com slash GV gaming, uh, where we offer a variety of tiers for, you know, different, uh, you know, monetary needs and levels. Lots of cool perks at each tier, uh, ranging from, you know, one dollar a month all the way up to four hundred a month if you want to sponsor TNT. But um, our, our most popular tiers tend to be our live audience tier, which is five dollars a month. And that uh, lets you participate with us live three nights a week uh, for our thrice a week news show called Today's News Tonight. Uh, it's Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 4 p.m. Pacific. And uh, if you're in our live audience tier, you get to be in a like uh, a specific Discord mm -hmm. channel where you can interact directly with us, and we'll you know we'll inter interact with things we see throughout the show. So it's kind of like a 
uh, an exclusive chat that we give preference to uh, aside from our YouTube chat. Uh, of course, we do read out super chats we get on YouTube, and we you know, appreciate every donation. But that's kind of a way for our community to kind of just be a little bit more directly connected to us. And uh, so that's proven to be very popular. And also our uh, $25 tier, which is our executive producer tier. And that comes with a bunch of perks. You get uh, exclusive merchandise four times a year, quarterly. Uh, we play games on stream with our EPs and up twice a month. <clears throat> excuse me, twice a month. And uh, that's a lot of fun. We play, you know, Smash, Platoon, Fall Guys. It's a lot of fun. Uh, and then, of course, all perks stack, too. So you get live audience stuff. And then uh, on our YouTube channel is youtube.com slash official, And uh, that's where you can find all our content. Uh, one of my co-founders, Derek, just posted a badass Metroid Dread deep dive analysis. I watched yesterday. that the other day. It's so nice. good. Dude, yeah, he did it. He killed it. He really it, did. It turns out if you have a Derek on your show, they're always good people. I know. Exactly, yeah. Right. As opposed um, to a John, like I, I heard <laughs> I, I'm currently working on uh, putting the finishing touches on what we do. Well, we call them weekly discussions, but because all three of us are so busy with work and family uh, that we, we can't just do GVG full time. They don't always actually come out weekly, uh, but I'm putting the finishes on our latest discussion, which is uh, all about our favorite opening stage music in, in, in games. I, I'm hmm. a huge video game music fan. So that was oh, my I topic am. suggestion. Yeah. And so uh, we talk about all our various opening stage, first level themes, opening themes across various games for like an hour. It's a lot of fun. That's awesome. So so I, I, I do want to make this point real quick uh, because it's something that I mentioned on GVG the last time I was on a couple of weeks ago is that um, I, I love the fact that our, our communities have a lot, of, they share the exact same values, um, which is yes. one of the reasons that I felt so, uh, so welcomed by the uh, GVG community, um, uh, you know, for the couple times I've been on, uh, you know, and, and that, that is, you know, I, I have said numerous times that, uh, you know, content creators are a direct reflection of their audience, right? Like, like, y y you know, you can't curate your entire audience, but basically, uh, you're going to attract the, the, you know, people with the same kind of value system that you do, uh, or, 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 or that you have. And that's something that we work really hard on SDGC to try to cultivate. And it's something that you guys are doing as well. Uh, and so I just, that's why I feel like, like that's, it's just, you know, it reminds me of, of, of our community and it's just a very, very welcoming feeling. You guys are just crushing it, man. Well, I super appreciate that. And I, I, I said this to you when you mentioned that on today's news tonight recently, and I had never heard it kind of said exactly like that. And it really was touching to me. I really appreciate that you laid it out like that, that, that communities are reflective of the people who created them and, and who established them. And that is, there could be no higher compliment because the people we've attracted to our community, the, like you said, they, they share the same values we do. And, you know, we, we just want to be a force for positivity in gaming because that is, you know, and that is, it's, there's such a lack of that these days. There I mean, really they, is. There are people like you folks and now us, I guess, who are really trying to actively push against that. But I'm so tired of all this, the cynicism and the negativity and the toxicity and the white boys club, that whole mentality. I'm so sick of it. You know, I, I always go back to what the late great Satoru Iwata said, but the games are for everybody. That was the whole point from the beginning. God, I miss and that, that man. should always, I miss him every day of my life. And uh, he was just, I, I he re reflects everything we are here at GBG. And I, and I uh, really appreciate that people are getting that vibe from us. It means the world to me. So uh, re real quick, um, uh, it may not sound like a big deal for, for everybody listening, but we just hit a thousand followers on Twitch, um, hey, which makes me feel questions. good. Uh, we did. Um, and so, you know, it may not seem like a lot, but we are this, we are small, 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 small content creators. Uh, and, and so to see that is, uh, really heartwarming. I like that. You know uh, what? A hundred percent because of Ash. Thanks. We absolutely. weren't, we didn't wanted, hit yeah. a thousand before you. Know, so. Sure. <laughs> yeah, well, no, it's actually not me. It's Parappa. That's why. Yeah, that's, that's what it you is. Were, exactly. You were channeling the hype beating. Parappa. 
So, yeah. so unfortunately, um, you know, as you know, Ash was talking about, uh, you know, toxic and you know, toxicity and the White Boys Club. Unfortunately, uh, uh, pivoting to our first topic, well, uh, let's 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 talk what we've been playing first. Let's do the. Do we want to do that first let's, before let's we launch the heavy vibes. Vibes. We learned we learned from last week that if we start with a super heavy one, yeah. it's really hard. To Heavy's got to go in the middle, man. Right. Okay. okay. Heavy's got to right. go no, in the middle. Sense. You got to balance that makes sense. it. That makes sense. The only, that makes the sense. only heavy I like is is when I'm playing DDR. I'm, I'm a big. Well, I used to be a big DDR player, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I always play on heavy. That's the only time I like heavy, though. I'm a big fan of it in Team Fortress. Oh, nice! Very, of course. <laughs> All right. All so right. who uh, are we gonna let? Uh, you know what, Brittany, ladies first. What have you been playing, Britt? Is it is it because I usually play WoW and I am no longer playing Absolutely. WoW? Absolutely. Like, <laughs> starting with but, like... <laughs> I didn't even think about that, but yes, let's go with that. So up I'm... until Monday, she played WoW, and then... so up until Monday, I was playing WoW. Not even. It's been a week. It's it's yeah. So I've been I quit like as soon as the news dropped. Anyway, so I have been playing Breath of the Wild which I was really excited to talk about while I was still playing WoW because I was like, you guys, look, I'm playing another game besides <laughs> WoW. I've been playing that. I started The Witcher last night, and I also started a little bit of Ace Attorney. Mm, um, yes. I'm not that far into it. I like literally just started. I had full intentions to play in between work today, but I just didn't have time. Um, but yeah, that's what I've been playing. I am playing two big games that overwhelmed me that I didn't want to start in the first place, but I did. Witcher and Zelda, and um, now I'm doing Ace Attorney, and of course I'm playing 14. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Of course about. I'm playing 14. Um, duh. Uh, and of course, you know we have uh, we have End Walker. You know, you know we are marching towards End Walker as we speak. I, that is one of my most anticipated releases this year. Uh, Brit, Do we even know why we're going to the moon yet? Like it doesn't that... matter, Brittany. It doesn't matter why we're no, going no, to no, the no, moon. no. That's important because I'm. Absolutely. Like, there's a wiz there's a wizard up there. Is it's haunted. It's haunted up there on the moon. That's <laughs> where we gotta like, go. Everybody's like, so what's the significance of the moon? And I look up at my main story quest that says to be continued, and I'm like, you know, I wish I could tell you. <laughs> so if you have played Final So obviously and Walker is taking a lot of cues, and Ash, I'm sure you've seen this as well, a lot of cues yes. from Final Fantasy IV. Um and uh and, and so I, I we are going to the moon to, I would assume, uh, fight Zodiark. Uh, of course, in Final Fantasy IV, you're fighting Zeramis, but I would assume that Zodiark is somehow trapped on the moon, and you are going to travel there. Uh, I just, I want them to include characters like, like, but, like Usoya. But here's the key and... thing: you're assuming, right? I am assuming. You're assuming the main story has yet to tell you why you're going to the moon. Yeah. I don't need a reason to go to the moon and Final that's Fantasy. That's fine. No, that's fine. You just proved my point. For the that's record, what I've been playing. Go. For the record, time to first Final Fantasy mention is 12 minutes. <laughs> yeah. Damn it. I'm, I'm slacking. It. That's I'm not slacking. fair. I'm, I'm playing slacking. it. <laughs> All this I'm is slacking. reminding me of, of a movie I recently saw from one of my very favorite franchises. Uh, maybe some of one of you knows what I'm talking about. But yes, people keep... Series. Yeah, cool. yeah, exactly. And, and I don't get, I don't get why people are like, oh, it's I was so going to guess Marvel, be. but Fast and the Furious. Oh, Marvel it. works too. But it's just like, I, I like my wife and I are just like dyed in the wool Fast and Furious fans. And oh my god, but I don't get, I don't get why there are so many people who are otherwise used to the the wackiness and just the the balls to the wall craziness in that franchise who are now like, oh this is too much they're going to the moon that doesn't make sense it's not supposed to make sense it's the break, awesome the That's... brakes have been off for a long time y'all are they exactly. are, wait hold on are they actually going to the moon now in fast and the furious they i they did yes they did what? yeah well fast no sorry not, where the fuck have the i been no, 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 like... no, 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 sorry, not the moon. space space but why are they so, in space? Like, why, why aren't not? they in space, Joe? Why you, aren't they? If you watch the movie, you'd find out. At least yeah. Fast and the Furious gives you an answer. Does he have fame? Did he I bring his Fast clue? and the Furious yeah. better storytelling and, than Final Fantasy fourteen? <laughs> did he? Yeah. Did he bring his? Did, does he have family in space? Is it still really important? It is to have family in space. Oh, Ash, can awesome. I tell you my important favorite not, thing yeah. about Fast and the Furious is that Please it do. is my mom's favorite movie franchise. My mom will only go to the theaters to see a new Fast and Furious movie. She owns all of them on Blu-ray. The only thing she'll ever buy, she is a 70-year-old woman that you would never suspect, and she is a ride-or-die Fast and Furious fan. I love it. That's, it it's really funny. Badass. 
I like I would picture somebody from Louisiana like that's like that's what I'd Finn, you know, picture. Finn, does your mom live life a quarter mile at a time? No, would but she's all about family. Today? She's all she's all about family. family. No, that yeah. no, that makes perfect sense. That makes perfect sense. Um, I was go- I was gonna I was gonna jump in with something, but I forgot what the fuck I was gonna say. Um, Derek. Yeah, well, if ladies go oh. first, then clearly ladies go second. So, well, I, actually, actually, I did want to ask Brittany one quick question. Brittany, remind me, have you pl- you've played Breath of the Wild before, right? I attempted to. Yes, you attempted to. What stopped you? I forgot. I don't like it. Um, <laughs> I. <laughs> Well, I didn't like it. That's unfortunate. I just, I just couldn't hop into it. I think. Uh, I was expecting I'm something sorry, deeper. Sorry, but the power of that statement. You know what? Uh, I'm going to say that I appreciate it. I appreciate. I just that. didn't. I like, I just, I like it didn't hook but. with me, and I've I've complained about it before. It just didn't. It didn't. It did not hook shot me. her. It did not hook mm-hmm. shot her at all. No, it did not. Well, hook yeah, shot because me. they didn't give you a hook shot. So that is refreshing as hell, though, because look, I, I like Breath of the Wild. It's in my it's probably like my fifth favorite Zelda game. But I, I do get a little tired of the it's the best thing ever. And if you disagree, you're yeah. insane. Right. It's a it's an amazing game and it's a great game. But I just I it is kind of refreshing to hear someone be willing to, to say, you know what? Man, I kind of bounced off it. That's totally Wind, cool. Wind, Wind Waker's better. <laughs> I think the Thank problem you, yes. I think the problem with Breath of the Wild that I have with a lot of games it's too long and too like it's not the pace that i'm used to from zelda games right like i can usually go into a zelda game and within a few days or weeks or whatever i can be done whereas breath of the wild you just you you just kind of get lost and then you you're like am i supposed to be doing this or am i supposed to be at this this I, I've got like 400 hours in Breath of the Wild. I'm I'm afraid. Well, to say. see, and that's like, <laughs> like every person that I've talked to has been like like that. They're like, I have like over 200 hours, and I'm like, I don't even know if I have that much extra time. Like right now. <laughs> like, right. Right. Yeah. I mean, I and I, I think it was uh, was it you, John, who said uh, Wind Waker? You like right? Waker? I think I think Wind Waker is personally my favorite Zelda. It is my it's my favorite 3D Zelda. I kind of like it's. Yeah. I go through. I separate, favorite 3D, like, yeah. 3D yep, Zelda. Yeah. It's easily Wind Waker for 2D. I got to go a link to the past or Link's Awakening. I kind of go back and forth on it. Ash um, I, remake or Game Boy? Uh Game Boy. Ooh. Okay. Game Interesting. The, the remake. Game I Boy like, or Game Boy Color? Well, Link's Awakening Deluxe is my favorite version okay. of the game. Yeah. But I gotta say, the remake. Something was off about it for me. I liked it. I liked it, but it didn't. I maybe it's because so I, I was a kid when I played the Game Boy version. And you know that's I have nostalgia for it, but right. Link's movement felt a little bit slow. There are those weird performance issues. The performance issues were on the yeah yeah, and then I was like I was really mixed yeah. on the rearranged soundtrack too. Like some of it I loved, some of it I didn't like as much. I really wish they had the original chip tune soundtrack as an option, but that is such a un Nintendo thing to do. Like it, it, it's among my favorite Zelda games, but those there was no reason for those performance issues to be there. Like, yeah, I, I just... I, that, that's one of the biggest egg in my face moments I ever had to game explain because I kept telling people I was, you know, when we were doing preview, uh, and, you know, impressions and stuff and coverage of Link's Awakening remake, I kept telling people in the comments and people would ask, "Oh, don't worry, this is Nintendo. You know, they're the yeah. they're the masters of polish. This is yep. these performance issues are just because it's a it's a you know a pre release build of the game. It's going to be fine." I sure was, was wrong. <laughs> I was completely wrong. Well, uh, Derek, um, I I already Maybe. know, I, I I already know what what Derek is going to talk about. So I'm very excited about you, this. You know, one and the other will I, not I, surprise I, you. So oh, okay, so 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 why don't we go ahead and kick it off with Derek? Derek, what are you playing right now? Uh, well, I am playing. I just started up Great Ace Attorney which yeah! I've been playing quite a bit of. I love Ace Attorney. I've so played every one of these games. I devour them. There's something about the the charm in the writing that I really love. There's something about when you're on a case and you can actually solve the next step ahead of the twist actually coming that feels very satisfying. Um the first case on the first of the two games included in the Great Ace Attorney collection. Uh, there is already a couple of moments in the first case where you can actually be given bits of evidence a little early if you snoop around and play with examining the evidence. Really? Yes, they will actually kind of hint at a future or or give up a future twist because you took the time to check something before you had That's to. That's cool. 
And I like that. That's pretty unusual for Ace Attorney, and I feel like that's rewarding my need to fiddle with all of the things in the in the court record. So, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, this was a game that released in Japan, but not here, and we're finally getting it, correct? Correct. correct. I think they were 3DS okay. games, both of them, right? They were 3DS games, yes. right. Yeah. Um, right. But yeah, they're, and, they're lovely. They look lovely. They sound lovely. They're tons of fun. Uh, very charming. I want to say, Derek, I mentioned this to you the other day, but I, maybe Ash or Finn can clear this up for me. I believe these are the first Ace Attorney games that use motion capture technology. Um, I, oh, interesting. I, I, didn't know that. I, I don't know I if they're want... the first. I did look up. They did use motion capture, but I don't know that they weren't used for. Okay. Well, um, when did Great Ace Attorney come out? Was that before Ace... or after? Um, 2012, I want to say. What was the fifth one? Uh, Dual uh, Destinies? Trials and... Oh, um... D- D- Dual Destinies or Trials and Tribulations? Dual, it was it's Dual, Dual Destinies, Destinies, I think. Dual Destinies. I don't okay. know if yep. Dual Destinies used uh, motion capture, and I th- I think that might have been before Great Ace Attorney, but it's hard to timeline that all out when we haven't had to think about those games. So, but, but yeah, yeah. Some, something you mentioned about, or something you brought up to me about Great Ace Attorney when we when you and I were talking the other night is um, that very ethereal. Uh, kind of, yeah, yeah. Could yes. you touch on that, man? Because you had a great way of describing that. Yes, they. So obviously, it's set in like a kind of uh, mid late eighteen hundreds kind of time period. It's meant to be like that kind of Sherlock Holmesy time period. So it's it's very very much not just pre war in terms of World War Two. It's like pre all of that. And yet, something about their choice of color palette and the way that they do their lighting and their saturation. There's something about it that reminds me a lot of like post-war idealist cinema in Japan, which is a thing that I am learning more and more about, especially as I am am doing my separate film podcast and have had to look at some other movies of the time. But um, it's, it's very interesting and I feel like a very intentional choice to do their lighting and color palette that certain way. Um, but I noticed that it, as it's, well. It's right just a lovely back. game. It's very dreamy. Um, but yeah, so I've been playing a lot of Great Ace Attorney, and then I picked up Samurai Warriors Five, which just hit. Of course you did. Of, of course, course I did. did. As yeah. the right, as the resident Muso Stan, um, I will say Samurai Warriors Five is is probably the most fun I've had with one of these um, since maybe the original Hyrule Warriors. Um, I wasn't huge on Age of Calamity. It was fine. Um, it didn't. It didn't have the there, I think that performance and impact are a really big part of those types of games and right. Age of Calamity ran did not have performance <laughs> really bad um but also like there's little things like it's like hit stop on the hits and and attack animations and they just didn't I know poor Ace in the cone in the background of Finn's webcam um no the poor baby but um what happened he's it just the dogs in the cone of shame is all but uh, um yeah yeah he but he's just like get me the fuck out of this thing he's got a shaved butt, <laughs> he's got a but shaved butt. i'm very picky oh. about muso games even though i love them and i think samurai Wars 5 is gorgeous butt. i think it's ton a ton of fun to play uh i think that it is probably yeah my favorite in a very very long time so i'm um, i'm enjoying it I, i'm playing on pc i'm not playing on switch switch version does not run well at all unfortunately switch 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 uh doesn't handle that's, Musos very that's well. that's a tecmo koe uh, thing they're not exactly good yeah. at making their games run well at the best of times so you know what's funny about that though is i had the exact opposite experience i have never been able to 100 uh like a previous zelda muso game i haven't played a lot of the regular muso games yeah but i played hyrule warriors uh and definitive edition and i enjoyed it enough but i just couldn't it was just too much content. It was too much. <laughs> a lot. I played the campaign and that was a bit, that was, I was good. But then for some reason, Age of Calamity, when it was announced, I was like, okay, this is cool. I'll, I'll pick it up. But when I played it, it just grabbed me despite the performance issues. And I actually ended up 100%ing it. And I wow. almost never 100% games anymore just for lack of time. <laughs> yeah. But there was something about that game where the, I, I think it streamlined a lot of the grind. Yes. from other Muso titles, and it made it just streamlined enough that getting 100% always felt just within reach, and I just enjoyed the gameplay loop, I guess. It's the way that it gave a little bit of the Muso formula up and really adopted a lot of Breath of the Wild's DNA that makes it yeah. very, very different. And I, and I think I've noticed that a lot, that people who don't like Age of Calamity but like other Muso games tend to be in it more for that Mm. grindy the battlefield management 
um, you know, kind of those elements and people who really loved Age of Calamity also tended to really love Breath of the Wild. So, um, right. But yeah, I mean, fantastic game. Didn't totally fit for me as one of my favorites, but um, but yeah, so Samurai Warriors and Great Ace Attorney have mostly been what I've been playing the last few days here. So, um, Ash, what do we, we'll go with Ash and then Finn and then I'll, uh, I'll, 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 I'll close out. I'll, I'll talk about what I've been playing after that. Ash, what you been playing, man? Well, I want to have been playing Great Ace Attorney Chronicles, but I have not yet. Uh, my <laughs> wife and I are both massive Ace Attorney fans. One of my favorite gaming ex- experiences is uh, over the years is us playing the first three games together on Wii oh, that's awesome. of, all console, of all platforms. Um, and we tried to play Apollo Justice, but, you know, it's still stuck on the DS while we're, you know, mobile platforms, I guess. Yeah. And we didn't really enjoy the experience huddling around together. So we're both very excited to finally play these game, uh, play, you know, these two new games, uh, you know, on a TV again. But uh, in terms of what I have been playing, um, Blaster Master Zero Three. I'm a huge Inti Creates fan. Shit, I forgot uh, that's yeah. out. Yeah, it came out on uh, today actually. And my good buddy Matt Papa at NT uh, sent me a code. Matt I, Papa. Uh, I yeah, love yep. that hey. man. And is uh, well acquainted with Matt. Oh yep. yeah, he's he's the nicest. I've worked guy, with him before on lots of stuff. That's awesome. Oh, Finn, yeah. is there he's anybody nice in guy. our like spheres of of media and content creators that you haven't known for years because? <laughs> I mean, we go to events like I PAX, touch. and you just walk up to everybody like, "Hey, this is so and so," and it's like, "I right. bu- bu- I'm put yeah. a bell on Finn next time we're at PAX." Ash, Sorry. keep going, man. Keep going, Ash. Uh, Sorry. No, so, so I haven't been able to do, to do uh, like a video on it yet, just because I've been so busy with work and everything. But now that I can talk about it, I think the embargo lifted today at six. And look, if you enjoy Blaster Master Zero One or Two. It's just, it's more of that. It's just, it's awesome. The, these games are so good, and they, they it picks up directly where Zero Two left off, keeps the story going. By this point, I'm super into what's going to happen to Jason and Eve. Like, it's just it's just a fun anime-ish story. Um, the gameplay is just on point. The boss fights are so fun. The music, oh, the music. It's just... That's it's one crazy. thing those games always do well, is that, oh, that, yeah. that old-school chiptune music. Like, yeah, oh, it's so like fucking good. Favorite. So I've been playing that. I've been playing uh, season five of Fall Guys with my friends. Uh, I'm, I'm a big Fall Guys fan. Uh, I've, I've kind of stuck with it over the months. All the way season through. five. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. And, and how, uh, how populated is that community still, uh, uh, Ash? Um, like, how many you know, people it, are still playing Fall Guys? I mean, I can only say anecdotally because I'm playing. Right. On, uh, I'm playing on PS5. You know, PS4. So I, but I, we never have any issues getting games. Like we get the full sixty players all the time. Um, it seems like it's pretty active. Uh, I know the Among Us players out there don't want people to believe that because there seems to be this <laughs> weird like fight between the two communities. I don't really get it. They're completely different games. Um, but it seems very active, and I, I got to hand it to Mediatonic. They've really done a great job improving the game after what was kind of a lackluster uh, start in terms of taking a little too long to get new content out. They've really, really righted the ship, and Season 5 is a lot of fun. So... If you, uh, like like many people, dropped it out of the you know, lack of interest in season one or two, go back and give it a shot, because season three and up really started adding a lot of cool new stuff to the game. Um, I quit because I, I could never play. win. I'm terrible Ash, at all, guys. It'd be, it'd be I, tough to win crowns, for sure. I'm Ash, so were you, uh, have you been able to get the Ratchet and or Clank costume yet? Uh, the Clank event starts next week, so no one's gotten the Clank costume yet. But the Ratchet okay. costume I did get, uh, and I, there's one more thing I need to do to get the Ratchet emote, but I'm not sure I'm going to have time to actually do that. Before Is it the I duos win? Uh, no, that one I actually got, fortunately. Oh, nice. to, uh, me and two of my best friends, uh, or sorry, two of my best friends and I play uh, Fall Guys every Monday. Uh, every Monday evening, just you know, have some beers and and get together online and and play it. And they're we're all really into it, so we're able to do the squads stuff and the duo stuff. Um, but uh, yeah, then I guess beyond that, I've just been as much as I can playing Skyward Sword HD. I really wish I had more time to play it. Uh, I'm I'm really enjoying revisiting the game. I was not the biggest fan like the skyward sword is weird yeah. when i played it back on wii like there were things i loved about it like loved about it but there are also things i really really hated about it and uh i'm finding that with the hd version i was not expecting it to wow me with the visuals as much as it has it's beautiful the the, the paint the game's painterly art style really was held back by the wii and yep. it looks gorgeous 
here in 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 1080p 60 fps that 60 fps makes such a big difference for this it game. really does and uh i'm just being reminded about all the things i really liked about it but i know that eventually i'll get to some of the parts i didn't like about it like some of the like the segments of world design and stuff but right i'm still having I, a good time revisiting it i'm actually near the end ash and of course you know that's taking a, a I'm I'm going to come back to that later. I'm I've got other games to prioritize right now, but yeah. Uh, you know, I'm somebody who, you know, I'm in the same boat, right? Like I was never the biggest Skyward Sword fan. I I didn't think it was I didn't think it was like, you know, the the horrid piece of shit that some people thought it was. I mean, it's it's right. it's it's a, it's, a, it's a Zelda game. So it's <laughs> right. Like see see Britney over there. Like like it's a it's a Zelda game, so it's still better than most most games that are trying right. to do the same thing out there. Um having said that, I you know, I'm near the end. I'm I'm about to enter the Sky Fortress, and um, I had forgotten just how much this game kind of falls apart in the back end. Um, when you, for example, have to go through and like, for, I mean, go through and look for the song of the hero, I, I, I assemble all the notes. Like, it is just so tedious. And I was, you know, I was doing the first part of that quest a few nights ago and swimming around, uh, you know, Farron Woods and just going, why am you know, you know, I have the master sword. I am clearly the hero of time. Why can't you just give me the song? Uh, like, <laughs> like, like I am the, I, it's me. I'm the hero. Like, why do I have to do this? Like, you have to prove yeah. yourself by swimming around and catching all these notes. And it's like, why? Like, just give it to me. Um, but, I think that's yeah. the biggest problem that Skyward Sword had is it had beautiful design, had one of the best characters in the series, my boy Groot. The music was amazing, but just it, it just fell flat for me. Like you have an open world, you have the ability to fly and you don't make an open world Zelda and you go to the same three places over and over again. Yeah, and, and it, it, it doesn't help Brit that Farron Woods is one of the most boring areas in any zelda game like you I know just... what i remember hating the fucking most was the like the earth fire area and climbing up yeah. that mountain and that punk ass little troll or whatever he is <laughs> just like sending i got so fucking mad at that part yeah oh my god well it, what's also weird about the fair and woods area is you know later on in the game you have to revisit it and yep. you know we, we've all been uh we've all had those experiences where you're playing a game and maybe you clip outside the game world and you see something you're not supposed to see a big void and you get that drop that your stomach drops and it just feels like something's wrong but fair and woods and i don't know if i can think of another game that i've ever felt like this about but fair and woods when you go back and it's all flooded and you're it's you're able to swim anywhere even to the borders of the whole area and hit invisible walls that's all part of the game world it's all intended but the whole the whole segment made me feel very uncomfortable like i was you were like in just, a liminal space yeah it was weird and, and i i don't mind water areas i don't mind swimming in games but there was just something about the fact that you're revisiting this area that you can't ever get to these parts of the area the first time you go through but you're way above everything else. I don't know. It just made me feel really uncomfortable, that part of the game. It was just a bizarre feeling to me. Um, let's see. Uh, who was next? Finn? Yeah. Finn, you're next, yeah. right, dude? Yeah, Finn, yeah. go ahead, bud. Finn, what are you playing, man? He's playing baby. He's he playing is pl daddy. He is I, I playing am, daddy. I am playing daddy, but I'm also just finished the Citadel DLC for Mass Effect 3. <gasps> Nice. Which means Story. I am about to do the final missions and get my triple platinum in the Mass Effect Legendary, my quadruple nice. platinum, whatever. I'm beating it all in insanity, and I'm doing I gotta everything. Say, I'm very juggling excited. juggling the entire Mass Effect trilogy with being a new dad is pretty impressive. It is. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's awesome. Well, it it helps because Caitlin's never experienced Mass Effect, so she's like playing alongside with me and choosing who I take on missions and who I get to romance and. Oh, she like she's being part of the fun, so it's been a really. Who is cool she having experience. any romance? Yeah, I, was, I was gonna say that's the question well, everyone wants to know. Yeah, <laughs> we went Liara in Mass Effect One, uh, because I'm playing Femship for the first time. So, and I'm playing a completely different class than usual. So I wanted things to be a little different. Uh, so we went Liara, and then we went Thane for two. My beautiful fish boy. Yes, and then uh, we're we, we're sticking with Liara for three, and the reason we didn't she was so close to going Garrus, but she found we found out that uh, if you don't romance Garrus or Tali, then the two of them hook up at three, and we both really wanted to see that, so right. we we kept Garrus as a friend. Uh, can I we, can I say something really funny about that? 
Sure. So in Mass Effect 1, I romanced Caden. In Mass Effect 2, it was Garrus. And then Mass Effect 3, I couldn't choose. So I literally just romanced the both of them. And I was like, whoever ends up on top ends up on top. It was fucking (laughs) Caden, even though I wanted it to be Garrus. And oh, my heart broke when I saw him and Tolly together. I fucking hated it. I was like, you motherfucker, you moved on so quick. <laughs> hey, well, it's great. I was legit heartbroken. With Liara as the shadow broker, if you have any other dalliances, she brings them up. She's like, I, I'm the shadow broker. Like, I don't know what you want me to do. I know about this. So anyway, we're playing that. But I'm also, I just started Chris Tales. I don't know if anyone else has oh, started I've playing Chris Tales. All kinds of good shit out. about this, actually. Yeah. It's a, de- like, visually, this game is a delight. And I really dig the time travel mechanic because like in battle, you can control, send an enemy to their past or future self to uh, change their mechanics or their, their, their states. Or like if you cast poison on someone, you can send them to the future. And then all of those stacks of poison that would have ticked each round all get hit at once. So it's like, it's cool stuff. And it also does one of my favorite mechanics in an RPG, which is the Mario RPG mechanic of if you time a button press, when you hit, you'll do extra damage or when you defend, you'll defend more. So I'm not super far into it yet. uh, But this, the voice acting, is incredibly charming the graphical style is incredibly charming the music is on point like everything about the game is exactly what i kind of wanted it's a very wholesome feeling game it's not you know a lot of jrpgs specifically can get really heavy on the themes and the sadness uh this one is i mean there there are like bad things happen but there's still like a permeating feeling of like joy and hopefulness in the whole thing so i uh I'm really digging Chris Tales. I'm playing it on Switch and haven't seen any like performance or graphical hiccups. So it's uh it's it's my nighttime game. We'll play Mass Effect on the couch and then nice. put Anna to bed and I'm still up for an hour or so, so I'll just play some uh some Chris Tales and it's good stuff. I'm you really, know, really digging it. Finn, I I feel like such I feel like the odd man out here because everybody has been enjoying the Mass Effect trilogy. And I just have no desire to go back and revisit it. And I feel weird That's about fine. that. Because, you well, should. Like, like, like there are three, <laughs> impe- I mean, I mean, no, Derek, like, 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 like there are three impeccably made games. Um, You know, they're stone cold classics. And I, I have. There's a butt coming. Zero desire <laughs> to go back and, and play them. Um, and I don't know why. Like I've sat there and looked at the PS5 because I would, you know, play them on PS5. And I've sat there and looked at the games on the store and been like trying to convince myself to buy them. Like John, you want to replay these? And I'm just like, no, I don't. Like I just don't care. Although I will say, I think my son is 13. I think I think I should get him to play Mass Effect. Yeah. yeah. See, that's the key. Is that yeah. if 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 Caitlin had already experienced it as well, but I think being able to play it alongside someone that had never experienced it really elevated the whole playthrough for me because she'll like when a, she all right Derek this is going to be a deep cut remember how you say you can't play divinity with Martha because she goes rogue yes and murders because everybody? she's a murder hobo exactly, exactly. wow <laughs> yes so imagine Caitlyn but just at the worst possible time she just flips a switch and goes I want to go full renegade fuck that person I'm like no we don't want to kill their entire race <laughs> we need to make the good decisions yeah. so I had to rein in some of her bloodlust that's but funny. it's uh so she, and she had you punch the report the reporter then obviously I, yeah I, I wouldn't even call the them reporter, reporter but yeah. I'm not gonna lie you guys be... oh go ahead no no Ash please Oh, I, just, I would be very uncomfortable if I was playing Mass Effect with someone and they wanted to romance Ashley. Like, I just don't think I <laughs> yeah. could continue. I couldn't continue. So, just, I, so she's, you, she's the big space racist. I you couldn't. are clearly a you are clearly a Trump voter <laughs> if you want to romance Ashley. Oh, I love when people yeah, are like exactly. people Guys, are like you don't understand. She love what better. I came back to. I love when people are like, know, oh, right? but Kaiden's so boring. Kaiden's so boring, and it's like, thank you. It's, it's like the whole. So... No, first off, no, he's not. Have you seen that chest? But secondly, oh, Kaiden's awesome. Yeah. Secondly, it's like Kaden. the whole like, okay, I can excuse space racism. I can excuse space racism. 
but I draw the line at being boring. <laughs> like, I know, right? Exactly. It's like I I didn't even have to think about who to sacrifice. It I, and it's even like, oh, this is hard. No, it isn't. The space race is gotta go. Right. Dead glass. <laughs> and it's like right. that's, that's what's funny about it is it's like people are willing to give Ashley the chance to change, but you won't play the game to see if the boring guy doesn't get boring anymore like, Caden well, should have had a beard say... i'm just gonna say um some of the other yeah. some other gay gaming twitter people uh tuned me into a mod on pc that gives Caden like an oscar isaac beard i will say this caitlin initially wanted to romance Caden. Uh, but then she got real mad at Caden because, you know, in Mass Effect 2 and 3, whoever you save is just a real dick to you. They're like, I don't care if you're saving the galaxy, Shepard. I think you're a monster. And then by the time they finally come around and join you at 3, she was so over him. She's like, I'm glad you didn't romance that motherfucker. Fuck Caden. <laughs> she I'm, I'm got real anti-Caden real quick. I'm not going to uh, lie. Martha and Caitlin both concern me. I, I, <laughs> I I'm, I'm worried about, I'm worried about both. I, I just that's that's a concerning don't get these two together in the same room ever <laughs> like you know, like that to mass effect I, I just have it comes down to three words for me emergency the induction, induction port, port. Yeah. yes i love it i love that's it that's a straw tally <laughs> emergency, yep. emergency I, induction port. port so i i back in the day when i so i played mass i played the entire uh i played mass effect and mass effect 2 in the marine corps uh, and then um, I was out by the time Mass Effect Three came out, and I was always, I was always Tali all the way, right? Mm -hmm. Like I always romanced Tali, uh, because I was. What if I could have? I was really. It's, I wanted her to take off her face mask and be like, I want to see something unconventional. I want to just see like, I want to see you know some tentacles or like you know like. It, it, and but you can see the outline of her face like you can tell she's but, vaguely well, I, humanoid I wondered, and, and it turned out they do you guys remember this they used a stock, the, the stock photo, photo of a model well they changed that, that changed they, they changed, changed that. that they changed it mm -hmm. and now we have a much better look at tolly and it's it's very different i mean it's not super different but it's different enough that you can be like okay this is what quarians look like uh and it's interesting it's okay. better than just yeah. we photoshopped her purple and put <laughs> two yeah, lines on her face that. so yeah but. so i guess uh i guess this is where i'll talk about what i've been playing and um i won't dwell oh, so sorry I, we ran out of time so oh about man that sucks <laughs> uh so no i'm not ready to go there yet um so I'll just touch on Grace, Great Ace Eternally briefly. I've played about an hour of it um, because I'm prioritizing another game right now. Uh, but I'm just, I'll echo everything Derek said. I mean, I love Ace Attorney games. I've played every single one. Uh, and uh, I have been wanting Great Ace Attorney to come over to the West for years now, ever since it came out uh, on 3DS. Um, and I could not be happier that it's here. Uh, and I, I hope people buy it because I want more Ace Attorney games. I want Ace Attorney 6 uh give us miles you know, edgeworth we got six two give no we don't know we don't have investigations we, two, yeah, we do cowards is it spirit of justice is six i thought yeah spirit is of justice it? is six yeah, oh, yeah i must be six. thinking about well whatever the next the next game in the ace attorney franchise i'm ready for it just give me more um i so what i will talk about is neo the world ends with you uh Ooh, yes please because <clears throat> as as somebody who was like my life was changed by the original and i have not had an opportunity to grab neo yet so i'm settling so, in so so the, so <laughs> i am a huge there you are a cutie god damn it you're so wholesome um so i was a huge fan of the world ends with you i originally played it on the ds over and over, uh, and I played uh, Final Mix on Switch uh, several times. In fact, I replayed it to get ready for uh, Neo: The World Ends with You. And by the way, it should have been The World Ends Two. Yeah, we all agree. We Thank all know. You. Yeah, Thank we you. all know that it should have been yeah. The World Ends with Two. Um, yeah. It's not. Nino that Tooney. sucks. <laughs> yeah, right? yeah, Nino, Nino Tooney. Tooney. It really right, should have been. Yep. Like I, you know, like I'm down like, to relitigate we all, that. We can all agree it should have been The World Ends with Two. I mean, that's just a fact, um, but it's not. Having said that, um, I was wondering how I would feel about this because I feel like one of the things that made The World Ends With You so unique uh, were its stylus controls um, and, you know, that whole dual, uh, you know, dual screen setup uh, on the Nintendo DS. Um, and I am very happy to say that it has made the transition into more of an action, uh, you know, button controlled JRPG very gracefully. 
Um, right now, I have four party members, and essentially, uh, different pins are mapped to different buttons. For example, if I am playing as, you know, it, I, I can hit X for one pin attack, and then Y, immediately that character, like, that character that that button is mapped to, rushes up to the front and starts attacking immediately, and so, so on and so forth. So everything is 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 very fluid um and i it feels like a the natural it feels like the natural progression of the of the stylus controls from the ds and i actually like it better um i'm about i want to say seven or eight hours into the game right now um so i don't have a huge i don't have a great feel for the story at the moment uh i will say that um uh fret who is one of your party members he's he's the main character's best friend um he absolutely steals the show and is actually a far more interesting character than rindo who is the main character um it, 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 rindo is um a lot more forthcoming right off the bat than than neku ever was um which i think works to the game's detriment so far just a little bit because i feel like neku's with neku's nature of not wanting to trust everybody and his his withdrawal from everybody made him initially a more interesting character and i don't get that with rindo give it time um, though because i mean the world ends with you went some places you want to talk character did. evolution like it one did. of the yeah. best examples so it did well and there's some interesting symbolism too right like in in the world ends with you uh neku's headphones represented the fact that he was trying to shut everybody out right uh well it's Rindo, interesting the, i never knew that yeah that it, it was it was supposed to be some uh, you know like emblematic of his wanting to shut the world out okay um rindo wears a cloth uh mask and the reason he does that is actually like it's has, because we're living in a pandemic has nothing to do with the pandemic actually <laughs> like they made pains to say they were like they were like well this was really ill-timed um you know no it has nothing to do with the pandemic it's the fact that he likes to converse via text message more than he does uh face to face and so his cloth face mask is kind of kind of uh, a way to allude to that it's like being withdrawn um, Right, exactly. So okay. he's withdrawn, but but it's in a much different it's it's much different than Neku was. Um and there I are some returning would... what, sorry, what's that? Sorry. No, no, no. Oh, I, I, I kind of wish he would wear his mask more often. I, I've only played the demo, but and, and this shouldn't bother bother me as much as it does, but something about his character design with his mask down, like it's weird around his chin, it bothers me. I don't it's like weird. the way it looks, and it bothers me more than it should. I admit that. But <laughs> it, no, no, it no, you're you're right. Like it's weird. And and to be honest with you, I think I think I think uh Neku had an overall better character design than yeah. than Rindo does. Um having said that, so far I, I love the game. Um I, I will say it's not a great entry point to the World Ends With You franchise. I really even just eight hours in, I highly recommend that you play The World Ends With You first if you have not, because if you haven't, you're going to be completely lost in the sauce. Or you can watch um, the anime, which is a pretty faithful act adaptation. Or, yeah, I, would or, ask John or if you, anime. I would ask John if you watched it in the lead up, but I know that you don't watch anime because you're a bad it's an anime, so no, I haven't watched yeah. it. Um, but uh, there are some returning characters from The World Ends With You that I won't spoil here. Um, but, uh, but yeah, no, I, I love it so far. Um, it's exactly what I needed. Um, the other game I tried for the purposes of this podcast were the Final Fantasy Pixel remasters, specifically Final Fantasy one. Um, I picked it up on mobile and I picked up a copy on PC, uh, and I am here to report how it plays, how it looks and how it sounds. Um, so, uh, I spent the majority of my time with the mobile version. I played it for about an hour, right up. Uh, I'll get the good out of the way first. It's gorgeous. What? That's the, out of the way. <laughs> it's, it, it, it's, 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 it's gorgeous. John like, I'm not has you. a a horse that he needs to beat. It's not dead yet. So I do. it's not uh, dead yet. Um, yeah. it, it is. It is gorgeous. We this are, is right. It. It. What's that? I said what's we that? are. You're gorgeous. No, dead. I mean, oh, yes, I, but like, I mean, you're, all you're all gorgeous. You're all gorgeous, gorgeous but, and dead yeah. mentally. <laughs> but, but no. So, so it is visually and audibly, and, and or from an AV standpoint, this is the standard for for the like, for example, for the original game. Like, it is gorgeous. It is um a very. It feels like what the original vision for the game was if they hadn't been limited by the technology of their time um 
it, I it, it the whole soundtrack today on YouTube. The, I just soundtrack, the soundtrack of FF1 is and amazing. My like Nobu Oimatsu went he just went in man he went he all hard. fucking in in I, it's it's so good oh, i listened so to the good. final boss themes for for chaos uh the emperor and the cloud of darkness mm -hmm. uh today and he did not have to go that far no. but but he did and <laughs> the spell like the magic has really cool spell like if you cast meteor for example um there's little burn marks, le pixelated burn marks left over for a bit uh, in, uh, on the battlefield. And these games also have an AR mode on mobile. I don't know if you guys knew this or not, uh, but but you can you can like like if you're riding on a train and you point the, your phone out the window, you can switch swap out the background of the game for the move for them for whatever yes. like like that which okay. is really weird um so i had moo running around in the background while i was uh <laughs> while i was fighting which was yeah that that was interesting um it, it, from an audiovisual standpoint it is absolutely gorgeous um i i've yeah. never seen the original game look this good um the we, we got to talk about the font um <laughs> I we gotta talk about the, the font. one thing it seems so, like from everything well I it's can not tell. just the font though derek there there are other things that, that that don't work here as well um well yeah you mentioned some ui stuff that's so a like so I'll, I'll sum it all up here so so the font it was not hyperbole it's hideous and you will see that mentioned in every single review you read um it yeah. it on mobile it is borderline unreadable like I mean, I mean, I I have laser corrected twenty twenty vision, and I could not fucking read half of it. So a great test um, for this was you posted that screenshot on Twitter, and I'd done this with other screenshots before anyway. But and if you just resize that on your monitor to be the same size as your phone screen, and then oh. you look at it, yeah, it's unreadable. It's it's so it's an accessibility issue at that point, as in it's not accessible to any human being. Um, so the attack, so the attack prompt. Uh, in the window that the attack prompt appears in, you can fit the word attack nine times. Oh, um, it, it, it's it's that small and there is that much real estate left over. Um, th the problem is not quite as bad if you're playing it on PC. I got I was interested to see how what the discrepancy was between mobile and PC. So I picked it up on PC and I played it and it's it it's not as bad, but you can forget like, you know, uh, hooking this up to your TV, which I did, and sitting in a chair and trying to read it. Because at that point, you're like, oh, well, fuck. Um, like, you can read it as long as I stress, as long as you were sitting at a desk close to close to the monitor. Then you can read it. I feel like it. it would probably work on, like, um, a tablet, too, <laughs> right? I think if you had, might, like, a full-size, yeah. like, 9- or 10-inch tablet propped up, you yeah, know, at your might. desk, you know, while you're at work and kind of doing that, I feel like it would probably work well for that. But, but yeah, phone so, screens and TVs, it seems like a no-go. So our our good friend Scott White over at um over at uh, RPG Gamer actually uh, came up. He was the one who came up with the fix for the font. And the best part about this is well, it's not a total fix. It makes the font bigger, um, very similar to the PSP remake fonts. But the best part about this is that the files are already in the Western versions of the games. They're already there. So yeah. so so I I, I don't understand. I, I don't understand what Square Enix was thinking here. And the other issue with why is it, it's weird tiki tack stuff right like if you're fighting like when you're in a battle um and you have your attack menu open like you know attack magic item everything is nice and even but when you select but when you target your enemies that window goes away and you're left with this lopsided menu that is present on the right side of the screen with nothing underneath the enemies and it is just it's not the end of the world but it, it is just tonally it's really really awkward um I think what's frustrating about this for me is that, you know, aside from it not being on consoles, which it, there's no reason for it not to be, um, they're so close. Like, like <clears throat> Ash, you and I have had this discussion, and Finn, you and I have had this discussion as well. Like, like we're all Final Fantasy guys, and we have been asking for something like this for years, and they're so close, and they still can't, they they just still can't nail it, and. Uh, you know, and Ash, I sent you this today, but the fact that they are going to fix the font in the Legend of um, Mana remaster, which did not need to be fixed, and but uh, the guys, so, guys. So I mean, to I, be fair, this did just come out, so they may did. still decide yeah. to fix it. And 
I too hope they do. I mean, you know, it, for me, it's it's the font and the fact that it isn't on consoles. That's what I keep coming back to. Is yeah. I just, I want to play this on my Switch so badly, so badly. I, I, I want to caveat this, Ash. Like, I have no doubt that it'll come to consoles. I mean, come yeah. on, it's going to come. I have like, a feeling it will as well. Yeah. It's going to come to consoles. Next year is the 35th anniversary of the franchise. This seems like a no-brainer to be like, here's all six games, one volume, Switch, right. PS5. I don't think it'll come to Xbox. But Switch, PS, you know, PlayStation, boom, there you go, uh, sixty dollars. But I'll pay it. Yeah. Um, Derek, go ahead. Yeah. So, um, I, I will also add that I, I almost guarantee you the font gets fixed. But I'm gonna pull on my short, short history in indie development here and talk about some stuff that a lot of commentators probably do not think about. Um, I've seen a lot of people talk about, oh, well, you can just switch the fonts and it's better. And it's it's not better. You cause text overflow in some text boxes right, because right. the font is too big um this is the the problem with font size in these text windows is that you have to in something that is not like mono spaced out for a font you now have this create you can't sit there and say i have room for x number of characters in a line of text and then X number of lines of text in this text box. Um, this is something that that me and some other people were dealing with when trying to work out VNs, visual novels on phone, uh, was that you first need to try to work out the space that you have available, but you can't just swap your font to something bigger and hope that it works because you're looking at almost every line of text in the game, every text box to make sure that it fits. Uh, and that can take some time. So I've, I've seen a lot of comments from people going, oh, well, we all said this font was so horrible, you know, however, what was it, a month, month and a half ago, and now it's still like this, and oh, all you got to do is change this font. Like, it's a temporary fix for PC players who don't mind the ugliness of the overflow, but it's going to take some time, probably, to actually find a new font that will work in all of these games if they want consistency, which they seem I mean, to be going for consistency, that will Derek, work with all of their text throughout each game. At first, Derek, like, I didn't think they were going to fix it, but give it, like, Ash had actually, I think, was the one who reminded me about the fact that they did fix Chrono Trigger's font on PC. Yeah. They are fixing the Legend of Mana font on, you know, so so I, I think they probably... They will, I, 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 my, sure. my My thinking is they probably will, actually. It's just It'll not happening overnight, and, and um, while it's it's silly that it launched this way at all... I just don't know like, why it launched people, like this. People yeah. bringing yeah. up that it was, oh, well, <laughs> we knew it was bad a month ago, so why is it bad at launch? You can't change a font in a game and like changing a font in a word document and expect I just wanna, everything to fit. Right? I just yeah. want to point out for people listening, um, in case you didn't know that when Shinji Hashimoto retweets the font fix on PC, <laughs> you know, your <laughs> you know, your font is bad. Like, I mean, I saw Scott showed me that and I literally thought I almost died. I was like, <laughs> Shinji Hashimoto retweeted that shit. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Scott was like, you know, your font is bad. When the Final Fantasy brand manager is like, you know what? <laughs> if y'all want to fix this shit, here it is. That's also a sign um, that I think they're going to work on fixing fix. it. That's <laughs> uh, that's an acknowledgement to me. So, 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 um, so this is the part of the podcast where we are going to pivot into a heavier topic, and I do want to, um, I do want to, uh, kind of forward this with a content warning. Yeah. There's going to be uh, broad content warnings throughout. Yeah. So. We're going to be, we're going to be talking about things that involve, uh, self-harm and abuse, uh, both mental, physical and sexual. Um, and so if, uh, you know, I, I would urge you if you're in chat or if you're listening to this on podcast services, um, if, if any of that would, uh, trigger any negative emotions in you, please, uh, please, uh, sign off. Um, y you know, we, y trust me, it, 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 it's okay. Uh, we would rather you take care of you. Um, but, but this is stuff that, that, that does need to be talked about, talked about because one, Brittany didn't get a chance to, uh, voice your opinion on the stuff last week. And I think it's really important that she be given a voice here. And, and, and also simply because also simply because, um, uh, we have learned some new details, uh, since we talked about this last Thursday. Um, so with that in mind, um, Brittany, did you want to kick us off here about, um, what we've learned since then? Uh, did you want to talk about the, 
the additional stuff we've learned since then, or did we you should, want to start with the Activision mention, Blizzard walkthrough? Yeah, what, or, what or, or topic walkout. we're talking about because we've yeah. kind of skipped the that is we are we are talking about uh, the ongoing situation with the lawsuit being brought against Activision Blizzard by the state of California regarding uh, abuse uh, and harassment within the company I, towards employees. I still can't fucking believe this is a thing that's happening. Like I. Yeah. So I, I, I guess the thing I want to start off with you guys is well, I want I want to ask you all a question. So what obviously what's what's happened and what's been released has been terrible, but what has made you guys the most uncomfortable about it? I mean Ash, go ahead, man. Yeah. There's just one thing. I mean, I, I can't, I don't know how to pick one thing. I think the, th the thing, there are two sides to the thing that makes me most uncomfortable about this. So when this first all came down and I read the story, the first thing that made me uncomfortable, the first side of it was how inured to it I'd become. Oh, yeah, this is pretty much what I expected. Oh, yeah, this shit's happening. Oh, what a surprise. That itself is disturbing. But then I got to a certain part of the story that went so far beyond even the worst of what I'm used to hearing. And I don't really feel comfortable uh, repeating it because it's not my story to repeat. And it's so heinous, but anybody, I know you have all read it, read it. You know what I'm talking about? It has to do with a trip that was taken. Yeah. That just, yeah, I don't even know where to go with that. I don't even know. It's the most horrifying thing. And it, but it doesn't feel enough to say it's horrifying. That's that, that doesn't pay it the proper, degree of levity like the fact that this and i know it's easy to say that the fact that this shit's allowed to go on is horrible but that is in a whole different i just i we're talking about people's lives here and i it just bur it makes me so angry but you know but i but this isn't about me and it's not about you know any of us here who are you know men white men here on this panel who have never had to reckon with things like this in our own lives but i that so it, it's it's the fact that i've become so near to it that i ex almost expect it from these yeah. shitty companies but also that one specific part of the story that just really oh man so i guess that that's where where it is for me i um i think i'm 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 at that point i'm at that place as well ash um uh, you know, I'll just, you know, I'll just flat out say it, um, uh, you know, a woman took her own life because of this. And, you know, I, I you know, I, I mentioned it this last week and I'll, I'll say it again here because we have an almost all, all new panel here. Um, this woman joined an industry that I am sure she loved. I'm sure she loved video games. I'm sure she loved making them. You don't, you don't join the gaming industry if you don't find enjoyment. In it. And the thing that the thing that she loved ended up killing her. Um, she is dead as a direct result of the abuse that she received at Activision Blizzard. And if that doesn't tell you. If that doesn't show you, if that doesn't wake you up to the fact that there's something wrong, fundamentally, deeply wrong with this industry, then there, then you know what? Just shut your fucking ears and 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 go somewhere else because you clearly are not getting the message, um, and you never will at this point. And this can't, no no video game is worth this, no video game is worth this, and I I, I am so fucking angry that it's difficult to breathe when I think about it. Yeah. yeah. That's where I'm at. I'm, uh, I've got a lot to say, and I wasn't on last week, so I've got a lot to say. Please, Derek. Across the whole spectrum, I'm going to find, try to find the right times to talk about all of the many things I want to say. Um, I'm with you. Yeah. I will say, and I'm going to use the word favorite, but know that I mean it in a very bitter way. One of my favorite things about this whole series of events has been all of these men high up in Activision and Blizzard coming out on social media with, oh, I'm, this is awful to hear. This is horrifying, you know, to know that this was going on and, you know, something needs to change. 
and then constantly seeing women that those people harassed and abused respond to them with, but you did this to me or, but you enabled this that happened to me or I took but, this attention to you and you, but you were in the picture. Yeah. Yes. Or, or, Oh, but here's, here's this panel footage of you. Uh, that's, that's one that blew up really viral was, um, this, this one person at blizzard who, um, the, you know, did the big fake crocodile tears of this is all awful, but then there's panel footage of them responding to a woman who is a World of Warcraft oh, player. Oh, don't even get me fan. fucking started yep, on that video. Asking if when can the characters stop looking like they stepped out of a Victoria's Secret we'll catalog. A different catalog. But oh, fuck you. What's, like, what's wonderful about all this, again, mean that in the most bitter way, is that this is this should be showing people that Men in power, and I think it really is broadly those two things, not always both or either, but broadly men in power are doing the thing where they're going to try to broadcast, and they are broadcasting what what seems like all of the right language for diversity and for inclusion and for this is awful, this can't be allowed to exist, yada yada, but they were complicit the entire time or they actively perpetrated uh and 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 created that environment uh, and it's it is kind of nice with to see the the rage that is bringing people to call that bullshit immediately uh, it's not enough though man it's, it's not, not enough. but like, we, you know we, what and that's where it becomes our job to talk about these things it becomes our job to point these things out because not a lot of people are sitting around on twitter watching blizzard developers and blizzard executives and activision executives you know twitters and things like that um but it's it's worth it to us to point out this trend of so many of the people saying this is awful are people who took part in it and helped uh, create that um the other thing that was was really uh I don't I don't even have a a a good way to say this but the the news about the Bill Cosby suite Oh was, god, I was going to bring that. Yeah. yeah. Um so the Bill Cosby suite The Bill Cosby suite uh, the I, thing I that kills that. me about the Bill Cosby suite is that they're using the fact that the allegations weren't made public until after that picture was taken as justification, like people, it was the most poorly kept secret. Yeah, it was until an open secret. Hannibal like, Burris, yeah. b- like brought it to the like. Why else would you call the Bill Cosby it? suite? Yeah. Like, I mean, and then and then this, uh, uh, the guys that were captured in that group chat have been trying with the worst possible justifications. The one guy was like, "Oh, we were just talking about my friend's wife and and her friend," and right. like, "Sure, you were, buddy." And yeah. these were the same people that just days ago were doing what Derek said, and we were like, "Oh, this is terrible." And then it gets pointed out, like, "Oh, we have pictures and chat records," and now they're trying to spin all this kind of justification. And what kills me is that it doesn't matter how much evidence. And how much of this you throw in people's faces? Brittany posts about it, and and one person replies like, "Oh, whatever, it's just a picture." Like there Ooh, are some I saw people that, I got that just fucking mad. There's just some people that don't care. It doesn't matter what you show them or tell them. They're going to be like, "But they made a video game I liked," and that that's where it starts and stops with them. And that's one of the most frustrating things to see is that it doesn't matter how much of this is brought up. People are just going. The certain segments of the of the gamers are just going to shrug and be like, "But my Call of Duty," and it, it, it. I wasn't able to talk about this last week, and my thoughts have been all over the place because I don't feel like it's my place to really speak up too much about it. Outside of like, because you know, all you can really do is act in the moment to help. Like if you if you just talk about it, it runs the risk of just ending up being performative. And that's not what I want. And this is also a time to just like amplify people's voices that matter more right now. But at the same time, it's like, fuck these people for, for it. And, and, and like Ash said, at a certain point you get numb to it. Like last week or the week before when you guys were like, this is going to be a rough show. And I go, why? 
this happens all the time. It was before we saw like just how deep that rabbit hole yeah. went. But the the news that another company was fostering abuse and sexual harassment, it was just like, well, what makes this one different than our last five shows? Yeah, that Ubisoft or Riot or, or anybody yeah, else. Like, and, and that's that's really sad. That that's where my mind went first was, wow, this sucks. But it's it's old. Like, yeah, every company. It's just this is the flavor of the week that got outed. And I hate that that's where my mind initially, like, knee-jerk went was. And I, I don't know, man. I <sighs> Yeah, can I can I bounce off that? And Please, the reason Brittany. why bounce away. I, I asked the question in the first place is because every single thing that you guys have said is completely valid and completely true. But the most... The, so the most frustrating thing to come from this, obviously, aside from these victim stories... Is that even after all the proof, all the receipts, all all the truth behind everything, is Blizzard is still fucking doubling down. Yeah. So the females working there now are still going to fucking endure this. The people who are being treated like this now are still going to be fucking treated like this. And they don't show any fucking sign of changing or saving face i mean they hired an anti-union that's, lawyer that's yeah. how little the same people that busted amazon like yeah that's how care. little they fucking care and i can't i can't nobody no matter how many walkouts no matter how many fucking people stop subscribing to world of warcraft you can't fucking change that internally you can't make corporate people give a shit about people and that's the thing that fucking destroys me because that's not just in the games industry. That's fucking everywhere. Nobody, nobody takes women seriously in the workplace. 100% full stop. And it's even worse in the, in, in the gaming industry because <clears throat> it's been a boys show since the beginning. You know, I was reading comments on the video about the women who didn't want women to be dressed scantily in World of Warcraft. And so many fucking responses were, well, World of Warcraft, it, it was geared towards men. O only men played that game when it first came out. It was a majority. Like, who the fuck cares? Don't sexualize women. You want to look at fucking sexy women? I, I got a really big secret for you. There's a website called Pornhub. You want to go fucking masturbate and go see some titties? Go to fucking Pornhub. You don't play a video game to get your fucking rocks off. That's not what women and video games exist for. Th that, is, that is not why women choose to work in the games industry. The, the reason why women get into this industry is to... Stop these things, prevent these stereotypes, present a different viewpoint. And by Activision Blizzard essentially saying all this stuff isn't true, it's ridiculous, we're not gonna, you know, they're eventually enabling this behavior. And that's the most frustrating thing about this is I don't, I don't know how to make people give a shit about other people. And it's the thing we've been dealing with for the last five years, right? Yeah. Like you can't make people give a shit about other people. Just like Finn said on the post I made on Twitter, I can't make people see why standing next to a picture of Bill Cosby with a room full of fucking alcohol is problematic if you can't see that then i don't want to fucking talk to you don't come into my fucking twitter like th the whole thing is just fucking frustrating from the situation to the reaction to toxic communities reaction like at the end of the day i just feel like i'm screaming into a void because much like those women my voice feels like it doesn't fucking matter and I'm like, why, why should I even talk if I'm not going to, if I'm not going to be heard? The state of fucking California has a lawsuit against these people and they're not acknowledging it in the least. Today, they said they're not going to have team meetings where they're going to get everybody's opinions. They're going to have discussion periods where they're going to have groups of 30 people come in and discuss what they're going to uh, discuss what's happening. If you're not going to listen, why the fuck are you even... Wh why? Why are you even having these discussions in the first place? You didn't listen on Monday. So wh wh what's the point? 
you just want to fucking look good because you're not changing. So I'm I'm just overall frustrated by the whole whole situation. Like it would be one thing <clears throat> if they were taking what was being said and meaningfully applying it. But the fact that they're just trying to sweep this shit under the rug is just the icing on the fucking cake. Right? Yeah. Like that's 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 being a woman in the games industry. It's having your experiences either be dismissed because you're a woman, um, or just fucking not acknowledged because you're a woman, or not taken seriously because you're a woman. And this is one of the biggest video game industries in the industry, and I'm so fucking heartbroken that this is this is the way that they're choosing to go about how how they're dealing with a lawsuit like this as a woman i i want you to set an example if you're gonna be called out for this shit set an example but you're not because you don't care because at the end of the day all these people want is money eventually this president i think is gonna have to step down or get fired and i think i think he knows that too but i think he's just staying in for the money right because How about, is that Brack J. Allen Brack? I don't even fucking I know. That, I think any of them. Name. All it, the it, white men <laughs> names just blend together, and they're all yeah. pieces of shit, including Fran, whatever the fuck her name is. You know, you know. Let's, you know. I want to touch on that real quick, Britt, because I have seen this sentiment more times than I care to remember over the past week, and I know we've all we've all heard it before, and it's well, not all men. And, and and it's like uh, okay, but that's not the point. Not the point like yeah. that's that that's not at the least fu- acknowledge. Like, like at least acknowledge what has been publicly released, right? Like them not mentioning anything about the Cosby Room, about the people who were involved. Like just remaining silent. And I get it's a lawsuit, but the least you can do is make people feel like you're you fucking care that you're trying. Like. L- literally it's like bare minimum to show that you care but 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 the reason they're not doing that brit is because look i mean why i mean to be honestly i mean it's going to sound harsh but why would they <laughs> look at the look look at the way this has been handled look at the way these is all time after time after time they always what they always go away people stop talking about them people keep buying video games right now the industry like from a market standpoint is stronger than it's been in over a decade right because well, look, right. we're going into another wave of pandemic people right. are going to be buying more video games they're going to be you know staying inside more like that why, I why have, would they i know like, i know if, like and mentally yeah. i know that but i i can't get behind that logic as a company long term i just i just can't and like, like essentially, essentially, that logic is saying, uh, sexual harassment sucks, but we're going to be making a lot of money in a few months. So, I mean, yeah. let's just hold out until then. It'll blow over. Derek, that's go what's ahead, shitty. Yeah. So, if I may offer, uh, dim as it is, a, a bright spot that I think a, a little moment of 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 hope. Um, what makes this different? is that this is the state of California taking a lawsuit against Activision Blizzard. 100%. And that is one thing that I think internet commenters and Activision Blizzard alike are not taking seriously enough. Activision Blizzard is doing the Ubisoft route, which is the Riot route, which is double down... They'll It'll release a music over. video with WoW characters, and suddenly yeah. people will forget yeah, that the exactly. fucking harassment yeah. existed. I hope you enjoy yeah. your your fucking uh, K-pop appropriation from your, you know, like. But yeah. but anyway, um, because that's how it works. Is this stuff blows up on social media, and then they just button down, and and social media stuff does get to blow over because the jury is is shitty gamers in people's mentions, and that's a hard fight to win. But this is a lawsuit from the state of California. And I'm going to tell you right now, state attorneys general do not bring these kinds of suits to companies that big. Right. Unless they're already pretty fucking sure that they've won. And they, I mean, the fact that look at all of these horrible details we're getting. So much of this is in 
the initial publicly released documents for the lawsuit, like they took their time to compile this. And this isn't the state of California starting a Twitter beef. This is the state of California is going to drag some motherfuckers into a courtroom over this. And I almost guarantee that the outcome of this is not going to be as harsh as we want. But for once, these people are not going to be able... Activision can sit here and do their stupid statements and 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 hire their union-busting law firms and try to let this blow over as much as they want to. But people are still going to be in courtrooms with the state of California over this. And the state of California is is... Like the state of California and the state of New York both are like one step down from being as powerful as the actual federal justice department. So this is, this is about as hot of a seat as, as you can possibly put these companies in. Um, again, must stress, you're almost certainly not going to get, none of us are going to get all of what we want out of this, but yeah, this, this tactic of double down and let it blow over. It's not going to blow over. You got to show up well, to court one way or another, bud. Speaking of speaking of tactics, actually, I wanted to ask Ash a question, and and and, and it's this. Um, uh, you know, we've been hearing a lot of people say, "Well, uh, you know, stop playing Blizzard games right now," which I agree with. Like, like, don't play any Blizzard games. Cancel your WoW subscriptions. But we've also heard, you know, but every time we do this, every time we say, "Well, you know, don't play these, don't play these games right now." You have another crowd that says, well, but if you're not playing the games, then, you know, the developer who, you know, the rank and file who who haven't done anything like they suffer. But in this and which that's a point I understand. But in this case, like like the rank and file themselves are walking out of Blizzard. Um, so, uh, you know, I I, I generally I always I almost always support boycotts, um, even though I, I, I do see the arguments against them. But uh, Ash, I wanted to I wanted to see what 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 your position on this is because I I feel like you know if something doesn't give like if like like if these companies don't start feeling the don't start feeling that money crunch in some way then this is just not going to stop. I mean I I agree with you I I I agree that you know unfortunately money is the bottom line money is what makes these people tick and what's it's what makes them talk and it's what makes them sweat and it's really all they see they see everything in shades of green. Um, but I don't know how you attack their wallet and attack their bottom line if if enough people aren't willing to just care about the humans, about the people who make these games. And and it's not this is one of the worst representations of it. But th- but you can extrapolate this and see any number of examples of shitty fucking gamers who who don't care about the people who make their games in any way. It 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 certainly far worse and manifests in much more horrible ways for women but we hear about this all the time oh we don't care that you're crunching make our game oh your game fucking sucks you know it's 59 frames per second there's a frame drop your your game is shit man like it's i don't know i don't know how we became how i don't know how we went from the ones being bullied on the playground in in elementary school when we were kids to being the bullies i don't know how that happened but I much prefer it the way it was. I wish gaming was still a niche, nerdy thing that people made fun of us for. Because you know what? That's way better than the the pieces of shit that so many people who identify with games have turned out to be. And I don't know how we make people care. I really don't. And it's not even something we see only in games. You know, that it, it, it has manifested in the Me Too movement in, in film. And there are plenty of trolls there. I mean, look at the Star Wars community. How many horrible people there are in that community? Oh God, don't get me started on the Star Wars. Exactly. Well, like, I would, I would say, to be fair, I would think the like some of the original gamers um, back, you know, in school and everything. Um, I would say they are part of the boys' club, and the reason why they feel that way that they do is because gaming did start out as a primarily male-dominated community, and now that they are seeing this entrance into, you know, inclusivity, you know, not just female, but, you know, uh, people of color and, you know, people who have disabilities, it's like they feel like their space is being invaded. So it's... you, you, You can't... It's hard to say, like, where... like, what an ideal space in gaming would be, because that's 
like everybody's viewpoint is different and as a corporation they are trying to feed into every viewpoint and not just you know as much as we say you know women's opinions and you know women's uh self-worth matters you can't convince corporations that that's that that's a thing you know because at the end of the day these people probably started off as gamers um and kind of rose to the top and they still feel like it's a boys club from way back in the day yeah i i mean i i think you're absolutely right i guess it's just it, it, it doesn't make it make me very useful to be able to talk about it because it is a mindset that I, I literally, it's not, it's, it's so easy to say, oh, I don't get it. What, what's wrong with these people? I, you know, I just don't understand how they think, but it goes to the core of my being. I literally don't understand how people can be so horrible and so callous and so unfeeling. And so just not giving a fuck about, about the integrity and, and, uh, and just the, the livelihoods of people and just, general decency i it, it's it's the whole trump mentality the whole fuck your feelings you know yep. this is the, the a lack of empathy has become normalized in, in society because of that orange it's become off. a personality trait the cruelty yeah. is the point yeah cruelty oh. is the point and it, and for them it's it's a badge of honor the less you care the more cruel you are the right. better you are in trump world and and, it, and it, it's it's become a systemic human thing like I don't know if there's a way to come back from all this. And, and it's not even just, you know, it's not even the usual players, Activision, Ubisoft. We were talking uh, or, or I was reading earlier this week about how it was on Resetter, I believe. This shit happens at developers we think are safe. Like Insomniac, there was a whole thing about uh, there was a really heated design meeting about how uh, a few of the higher ups at, at uh, Insomniac wanted to make Rivet more, you know, traditionally feminine and, and give her wider hips and breasts and like the fuck like she, her her design's perfect the way it yeah. is for one and two it like it, it it's it goes in down into these like it's not just the overt horrible shit that that's uh, happening in places like Activision it's the microaggressions it's it's the it's the shit under the hood that 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 fosters this kind of thinking and fosters this kind of shitty culture that then bubbles up to the top and, and allows the really, really bad shit to happen, like what's happening with Activision. It just starts from the bottom. And I right. don't know how you fix that. I mean, and it's, know. it's, the... go ahead. I was, I was just going to say, and like it, it happens everywhere. Like I've seen a lot of people switch from WoW to 14 and be like, 14 has such a better community and blah, blah, blah. And that's great. Like 14 is wonderful. Love it. Mwah, chef's kiss. Like I, I agree. But the studios are still struggling with what Blizzard is struggling with, with Activision Blizzard is struggling with. No company, no corporation is better than another. Yeah. Like the the fact that people are comparing the two needs to fucking stop. Like, I love Final Fantasy. I love 14. I'm not gonna sit here and say that Square Enix is a better company to work for than Activision Blizzard because I've seen firsthand people fucking tweeting about being treated not great there. And it's like you, you, in order to understand the severity of the Blizzard Activision situation, you have to understand that this industry at its core is rotten yes. um, and it yeah. just needs a complete fucking overhaul, not just with them, with everybody like everybody needs to be held accountable. And it's like they're just the start of the domino, right? Like hopefully they fucking fall and it creates a ripple effect and ideally that's the result we want is it going to happen probably not people are probably going to get slapped on the wrist they're going to have some kind of fucking training like but it, it all goes back to what everybody's been saying and and i'm so thankful that you guys get this is it's like you can't you no matter what training you put people through you can't teach people to to give a shit about other people and you know at the end of the day that's 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 what it boils down to that's exactly what I was going to bring up, uh, Britt, was the actual like Final Fantasy 14 to WoW correlation is that someone pointed out that, that they know that that kind of stuff happens even in all Japanese companies, in every yep. company. It might not become the, the big news of the day, but they were like, 
if you really think things are better in Japan, when was the last time you saw a female director of a game yeah. handle like, like where are the like, they talking about how in the West, it's always one of the big parts of the lawsuit is that women are kept from promotions and higher positions of power, and that happens in Japan all the time. Like if your name's not uh, Ikumi Nakamura, no one knows. And it's just so it's 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 like you said it is you an get to epidemic sit, you get across to sit, the whole yeah you get to sit in the background on a piano and make strange faces to the men who get to talk yeah. right like that's what happened at the fourteen panel yeah it's so, it's yeah. just it's it's a it's an epidemic across the whole industry and it's it it co- it sucks but it's these moments where people rise up in anger and force change mm-hmm. otherwise it would just continue well and on a baby. I just have to say one thing. I've lost a lot of fucking followers because I've been so vocal about the Blizzard and the um the Blizzard activism shit. And I just like I just want to say I don't one them. I don't give a shit. Fuck fuck you. Yep. And two, if you don't care, like that's that's the severity. Like that's how deep rooted the sexism in this industry goes. Is that I'm losing followers because i'm openly against this because i'm talking about it and people don't want to see this like that that's the reality of gaming is people just want a game they don't want the drama despite the fact that they're playing a call of duty game where they are literally going to war where there's politics and drama the venn they diagram they don't the venn want drama. diagram of people complaining about this and the people that's that say keep your politics out of my video games is a circle yeah, it's a yeah. fucking circle. So, so I, I want to bounce off something that Brittany said and something that Ash said. When we talk about, you know, how do we fix this? Like, how do you fix a person? Right? Like, how do you how do you change a person? And the dep- the depressing answer is, well, you really can't. And and I'll you tell you why. You just gotta keep fighting. Like that's at the end of the day. Well, like that's what you gotta. Well, uh, you know, do. you know, Ash had asked the question. Like, I don't understand why how a person could. Like, I don't understand how a person could could be like this and i would refer you back to uh 1948 in nuremberg uh when the u.s uh I'm expecting that swerve but okay here we go so 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 <laughs> well you, so 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 you'll see where i'm going with this um where the allies had the nazi uh on trial uh for crime for crimes against humanity um and the lead prosecutor, I know his name, and I'll remember it at 3 a.m. this morning because I'm a student of history. Um, <laughs> but but the lead prosecutor for the Allies, um, it wasn't Thomas Biddle. He was one of the judges. But um, he was an American, and he was also a former serviceman. And he had fought, actually, in, in, in World War II. And he had been among the... Uh, some of the units that had freed uh, a few of the concentration camps. Um, I think Dachau and and a couple others. And he became, uh, he was a, um, you know, he was he was a lawyer and he became the lead of the Allies. And after the trial was over, and, uh, you, you know, the, the sentences had been carried out. Um, a contemporary of his, you know, they were still in Nuremberg, and a contemporary of his sat down with him at a cafe. He saw him in a cafe feel. And he said, well, you know, he said, I finally have an answer to a question that I have been chasing ever since this war started. And he said, well, what's that question? He said, the nature of evil. He said, I, you know, he said, from from the moment I arrived uh, in Europe, I have been trying to discover why men do the thing to each other. Um, I, and he said, I have never been able, he said, and I've been obsessed with defining evil and, and, and why people choose to do evil. He said, and I finally, he said, after, after seeing these men, on, I finally, I know why he said, and the answer is a complete and utter lack of empathy. He said, right. he said a lack of empathy. The, he described it. He described it as the banality of evil, and he was the one who coined the phrase "the road to the Holocaust was paved by hate, or was built by hate but paved with indifference." Mm-hmm. And the problem here is not just the people building the road, but the people paving it. 
as well. Um, if you sat by at Blizzard, and this is why this is why I I can't stand it when people say not all not you know not every not every man at Blizzard was like this. this you might not what, have touched a titty, but if you watch somebody touch a titty, then you're part of the if, problem. If if you right. saw this happen, I don't care how much it sickened you. If you saw this happen, and you didn't have the courage to stand up and do anything about it, then you are no fucking better than the person who, who, who actually committed the act. Because you sat there, and you allowed it to happen. Yep. That's what we said. That's what we mean when we say the road was paved by hate, or was built, built by hate, but paved with indifference. And that is the reason that shit like this continues to happen. It's not just the men carrying it out. It's the men who are not willing to stand up and fucking stop it. Yeah. If you're letting it happen, you're part of the problem. Stop being part of the fucking problem. 100%. I couldn't yeah, I have, I have couldn't two things to add and then, I, and then I'm done. So the last thing I want to say is... You know, d despite all the harassment and everything going on, like, women are allowed to dress how they want to dress. Um, so, you know, I may dress slutty in an MMO. I may dress slutty right now. I'm showing some cleavage right now. That is my fucking prerogative. You know, just because I am showing this and it looks good to you does not give you the right to fucking touch it or assume that just because i'm showing it that i want your attention if i am eating a delicious hamburger and you come up and you fucking take a bite of it just because it looks good to you that, that it's the same fucking analogy don't touch my shit like don't don't assume just because i'm eating something or i look good you can come and touch it like don't like i'm allowed to do and dress how i want you need to change. You need to change how you view women, and you need to change how you view sec view such sexuality. And two, thank you guys so much for giving me a chance to one talk about this, but to be white males who are cisgendered who understand the situation and fucking care because there's not a lot of that that goes around and it's i've seen ash I, like you're new to me so i'm not gonna say like i know what you've been doing but i've seen no you know I, my boys on this podcast have been tweeting about it and i i can't tell you how much that means to me so thank you just for understanding for making your voice heard and just for supporting it. Because even if you just retweet it and say, this sucks, that makes me feel good. You know, like you, you don't have to get on your soapbox and explain why it's all fucking bad. But just the fact that you show support means the fucking world to me. And I imagine like you have a community and I'm sure a lot of those females in your community see that and they love it just as much as I do. So thank you for letting me talk about it. And thank you for, um, you know, creating a space where people feel comfortable talking about it and just being an overall um, inspiration to the community. So thank you for that. Well, well really I really love you. I mean, yeah, I love you yeah, guys. That's why I'm you. here. I, I wouldn't awesome. fucking be here if I didn't like you guys. It's just, it's right? just, it's, it's just shameful that we even have to have this discussion. <clears throat> it is, um, but you know what? Yeah. These conversations are important, and we mm -hmm. need to have them. Like I said, I feel like just fucking giving up because you know Blizzard's response at the end of the day makes me feel like, what's the point of even saying anything? Because even when you have the fucking proof and you show it to them, they don't give a shit. But I'm gonna keep fucking fighting, even if I lose followers, even if people don't like me anymore i'm gonna keep fucking fighting not just for women but for everybody in this community who feels like they don't belong so well and you don't we don't want the wrong kinds of followers either it's like no I, i've had people fuck you. if you don't agree with like, me fuck yeah. off <laughs> yeah i've had people on my twitter threaten to unfollow me for for you know retweeting you know anti-trump shit or uh you know hateful or or standing up against any sort of thing not just sexism but but anti-trans rhetoric and, and anti-lgbtqia plus rhetoric right. and, you know like, people well, you know, who are racist like we don't we yeah. don't fucking want you like get exactly. the fuck out like, if you don't like, like well, what we yeah. have to say then you're you, you're not meant to be here 
And yeah. I'm not going to say that's okay because it's not because your opinion is shitty if that's the case. But you don't you don't have to be here. Well, and it's like I'm going to unfollow you. Okay, let me show you where the fucking unfollow button is. <laughs> right. This is not an have. airport. You it's do not about... have to announce your departure. Just fucking exactly. go, honey. It's about the quality of your followers. I don't want the wrong kinds of people following me. Exactly. If, if I could get an infusion of of a uh, hundred thousand Trump followers tomorrow, I wouldn't want it. My God, why would I? I had a like, I had a guy Jesus. once. DM, I had a guy once DM me. Uh, literally, it was three DMs with about uh 10 sentences in each dm as to why he was unfollowing me uh and a bunch of stuff about politics and stuff so i just went and used the bathroom and then sent him a picture of it <laughs> like, Perfect. That's, you know that's i was like all right here's what i think about that can i can i but, just point out something that that conflicts me is that i know i'm not supposed to care about the quality of my follower and like i should hold up my followers to a better standard but i just can't bring it to myself to block john <laughs> I know you can't. Right. I'm, strange, I'm strangely compelling. May, um, may, I, uh, for some reason, people like John. Yeah, and right. when John retweets our stuff, that's why we keep him around. He's got the following <laughs> all of us. So, so. so the thing that gets me. Oh, good. No, 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 no. No, I, 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 I just, I just want to say this. Real quick. Um, no, please. Go for this it. is the last thing that I'll say about it. And after that, I'm. I, kind of i'm done on the topic for now because uh, it's taxing to talk and, and like if it's taxing for me to talk about i can't even imagine what to talk about so Brittany, thank you so much for your strength um seriously like you you know you're sitting here thanking us but you don't you don't understand that i look up to you so well it's uh, something that we all like you you guys don't have a fucking fight in this you don't have a leg in this so like it's something we all have to do so like i I don't have, I don't, no, none of us have to, right? But like you guys especially don't fucking have to. So the fact that you are is incredible no, we really to do. me. No, no. See, that's where you're wrong. No, we really do. We do have to. We like, do. Well, right. well, that's the like thing. I agree, but other people don't, right? Cause, so like women and, are obviously going to be up in arms about this, but men, they don't have to be, but you guys are. Like they ties, should be, absolutely, but. And and that ties into what I want to say about it. Um, Of course, in chat, John Sigma Boost is as strong as his arms. That's true. Um, I just want to point yeah. that out. Uh, but Photoshop. this is the last. This is the this is the last thing I'll say about it. Um, you know, we talk about how to stop this shit. We're at the point where if you see it, you have to physically get in there. And you just you yeah. you just do if anywhere, you anywhere. It. If I if I see it, if I see you, and I'm fucking, I'm gonna fucking warn you here right now. Oh, John, badass. No, no, no. If I see this shit, if I walk in on this shit, I don't care if it's at a con. Or or anywhere else, you're getting maimed. Like I I like like it's it's gonna be a dark day in the life of that fucking individual if I walk in on that shit. And that's because that's what it's gonna take to stop this shit. It is time it is time to fucking throw hands because so, nothing else is fucking working. So racism and and misogyny and abuse are rampant within nerd culture, and both are also rampant within just work culture within within business In and life. obviously and obviously where those two intersect is is awful um resident male passing thembo here hi everyone um i've I love how you turn to the camera yeah i know so <laughs> i've i know and i i'm i mean this gently to all of you uh but seriously to to viewers and listeners um i know that you've heard and seen c comments that are hateful or derogatory about other people that you work with uh, for the way they were born. And I know you haven't done anything about it. And I'm not telling you this, that you beat yourself up. Maybe a little bit. I want you to do something about it. Self-reflect. It's okay right, if you feel right. shitty. That that just means you, like you feel something you that's, need to guilt change. Is, guilt is a sign yeah. that you need to uh, change your behaviors, right? Right. Um, go to HR. Tell your buddies that that's not an okay comment to make. Don't agree with me and then go and not do it because I don't care about your agreement if you don't do it. Um, I'm, I'm going to assume that this isn't going to get back to my place of work. Um, but the new station where I work with is dealing with a huge transphobia problem internally, uh, in certain departments. You know what? 
it's television news. It's an old white man's club. It's how it goes. And, and me and two other people have fought so hard. Um, and, and the vast majority of people we've gone to about this who have been present for these comments have gone, well, I didn't think it was funny, but you know, I just, it was, you know, I didn't contribute to it. And all of them are people who would, would honor, right. My gender identity and would honor some of my trans coworkers identities, but still not doing anything about it. And I know you're not. That's okay. I mean, it's not okay, but like, I'm not gonna, I'm not here to can't the, the cancel train's not coming for you. I just want you to know you gotta, you gotta do the work because that's how all this changes. You got to change it in every single workplace. If you, if you don't want to get canceled, rectify the shit that you've done. Yeah. Just, yeah. just, just don't, change don't do do it. It. to it. It deserves you that, that, that makes you deserve to get canceled. Yeah. If you, if you, not you real said anyway. something shitty, yeah. If you said something shitty or you, you you did something shitty. Like you don't have to fight against it. Just be like, "Oh shit, I'm sorry." Like, could you I, imagine I should, I how been good, better? Could you imagine how good the world would be if people, if if canceling actually was as rampant as the people that complain about cancel culture that would was? Be incredible. Right. Mm. Oh, there's so many yeah. fucking people would, I want yeah, to cancel. It would be like for every person that complains about cancel culture, if if someone actually got canceled for being shitty, how good this world would be? Uh, but that's an infringement on our freedom of speech. Oh, Jesus, just so, like so, so oh god, that's a whole other conversation. God, um, uh, sorry, I just wanted to say really quick. Oh, uh, please, Ash, <laughs> uh, Brittany, you're not the first to you know to thank me for you know speaking up or for you know, I've had many good vibes gaming community members you know thank me and Derek and Steve for creating what we have and creating the safe space and and being who we are, and and that's great, and and I, I appreciate that, but what I really wish is that we could get to a place where we don't need to be thanked just for being fucking decent. Right. Like, I right. shouldn't need yeah. to be thanked for not being a piece of shit. That should be the default. Like, I don't feel as though I deserve thanks for just being decent and, and, and not wanting people to suffer and, and, and wanting people to be treated the same. And treated with respect. And so uh, I do appreciate you saying that, of course, Brittany. But, it, you know, at the same time, my hope is that we somehow someday get to a place where people don't need to feel the – or people don't need to thank others for being kind because kind should be the default. That should be the fucking standard. And that's what I don't get. Why isn't just being kind the standard? It is so much easier to be nice to people to be kind and giving and loving than it is to be an asshole. The ab and absence I, of empathy, like, man. Exa you're right. And, and I guess it's because my parents raised me right. They raised me to be empathetic. I, I am a very emotional person. And, you know, I, I, that empathy is something that has always come very naturally to me. And we see, as you know, as you were saying, John, yeah, the lack of empathy and what that turns into. We've seen a version of that today with that orange fuck that <laughs> was occupying the White House until recently. Yes. The worst thing about him, well, uh, there are so many things, but what it all comes down to with Trump and his followers is a lack of empathy and it being a badge of honor to not have empathy, to be mean and, and, and for that to be celebrated. That's what it comes down to, lack of empathy. And to be selfish, honestly. Like at the end of the day, like that's like selfish. people don't like being told how or how they cannot act. You right. know, and and I was thinking about that um when I was picking my son up because they they closed his daycare because of a COVID um scare. So everybody has to be has to be quarantined. So he's gonna be home with me tomorrow. And it's just I keep thinking about how people don't like being told they have to do something and that's all it comes down to it's not the fact that it could be better for somebody it's just they want to fight being told this is going to help you have to do this it doesn't matter if it's going to help it's just them being told i mean you know i think as as an american citizen i shouldn't have to do this well i mean that's that's all well and great but like that it just comes down to what we've been talking about this whole time you can't convince people to give a shit about other people like you cannot no matter what no. you fucking do and, and it, it, it bleeds into everything too brit like you talk about you like you know you talk about being selfish like with everything going on right now like i feel selfish because uh, you know women across the country are 
continuing to deal with this stuff very publicly now, and I'm worried about fucking Final Fantasy characters. Like, I, I mean, it, you know, it feels... I was thinking about that today. It's like, you know... You're I'm allowed getting... to live, just like people are allowed to continue know, to play, like, World of but... Warcraft. Like, I, I get that, like, and a lot of people come to me and they're like, well, what do I do? How do I act? Like, am I supposed to quit? Like, I don't, I don't have those answers. I don't have those answers for you because just because I'm a woman doesn't mean that I can tell you what to fucking do or what to play. Like, I understand if WoW Ooh. is your livelihood. Like, if you if you commission art of WoW and people commission your, like, fucking draw it. Like, don't feel guilty about that. Like, that's your livelihood. So if, uh, if you, it's also if not you on play... you to do that emotional labor right that's not, yes if that's you what i'll just say like that's so shitty like they're already dealing with so much and then you want to put your betterment as a person on their shoulders like no, like what do i do job. and it's like I, if i had that answer i would be fucking telling you what to do <laughs> and i like i'm not gonna play wow anymore i don't i i can't i i don't miss it um just based off what what I, everything i've said but i understand that people have been playing that game for literal like years a decade and more um and they don't want to let go of that because it's a part of them and like i get that i'm not going to shame you for playing world of warcraft i don't i don't understand how you could after everything but i understand that people emotionally connect to things and they feel better when they do something and i'm never going to shame you for playing a game that makes you feel good uh, but speaking speaking of uh, speaking of shame, um, uh, I am ashamed to say that we are now our no. uh, our our hour and a half uh, <laughs> podcast runtime. So yeah. so so we do need to we. Um, We're all airing grievances, and that could go on for a long time. Yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. no. Um, but it's like like again, thank you guys for going over because it's a conversation that needs to be had. Yeah. And, you know, like, it's if we're going to go over for something, I would hope it would be for this. Um, you know, because I was watching, Absolutely. like, I was watching the time when we were all talking about what we've been playing, and I was like, oh, this this, this yeah. podcast is going to go over. Because I knew we were going to go long, yeah. <laughs> I was like, I know I have a lot to say. I'm sure you guys, ha like, have a lot to say. And, um, like, I knew ultimately we were going to go over, but, like... So again, it, thank though. you for letting me fucking vent about this shit. I mean, you know, what could be more important than, right. than, than this, than, than things like this to go over for? It needs to be talked about. It does. And, uh, you know, I, I don't know if, if, if anyone who follows Good Vibes Gaming will, you know, will see this in the future. Hopefully they do. And I'm confident that the, that the vast majority of people who subscribe to us and who follow our content are like us. And, and they are good, kind, and decent people, and they want the best for people. I agree. But if you're not, and you're on board with all the fucking shit that's going on at Activision Blizzard, if you're a Trumper or whatever, if, if you think along any of those lines, and Steve has said this on today's News Tonight, and Derek feels this way too, unfollow us. We don't want you. We don't want you. Bye. To. We've said not, the same yeah. thing about we've said the same thing about SCGC. If you're yeah, if you're on board with any of this, uh, get out. Like you're not welcome. It's called yeah. good vibes gaming, not shitty vibes gaming. Yeah. Exactly. So I would I'll mention one last thing, and then I'll let you continue, Please. Ash. I recently no, no. um I had a friend in Final Fantasy 14 who was very close and dear to my heart. Uh, we played for a long time together. He recently removed me from Steam. We haven't talked in a while, but when when 14 first came out, we were like doing content, end game content, like hanging out all the time. <laughs> And I got really bummed about it. And I found him on Twitter, and he is a, a conservative, avid Trump supporter, av mm. avid, like, everything is changing. And I was like, oh, I don't miss you. Like, I don't miss you anymore. <laughs> like, bye. Like, I'm glad yeah. you removed me. <laughs> yeah, I, I would rather you you unsubscribe and have nothing to do with uh, 100%. us. 100%. I don't want you. I don't, I don't want your vibes say. in my life. Exactly. As my dad would say, don't let the uh, door hit you or the good Lord split you. Or I think that's how it goes. Um, but yeah, it's just we, we all we all have to come together and, and just not. I mean, we're all I mean, we're belaboring the point now, but just not excuse it. Say something, do something, get involved, get fucking physical if that's what it takes. Put your money where your mouth is. Don't look and just be like, man, I don't agree with that. If you don't agree <laughs> with it, then fucking do something to stop it. And that's what we got to do. We got to start getting physical and start getting involved. That's uh, the kind of vibes those, I'm those here for. Those there. are the good vibes I'm here for. Those are, the, those are my yeah. good vibes. Those are the, those good, are good, good, those are good vibes are not always unfailingly positive vibes. No, the good vibes. And look, 
if I ever see anybody doing this shit, the good vibes I'm going to give you are the vibrations. Goddamn. I'm so glad that half that got hooks. cut off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But no, like, I, I hate the great. one bringing dirty content to this great. podcast. Great. Right? It Excellent. made it so Broke, much worse. So glad that got, so glad that got cut off. That's um, amazing. All right, well, let's uh, we'll go ahead and wrap it up here. Um, Ash, dude, thank you so much for joining us tonight, man. Thank you so um, much. Yeah, oh, seriously, of course. Dude. I'm, heavy it's night. It's been my pleasure. <laughs> heavy night, but you know what? That it, it's it, like I said, it's important, and yeah. it's something I feel very strongly about. I'm happy to talk about it. If we can and, change uh, one person's opinion by everything we've been talking about, it's been fucking worth it. I agree. Exactly. I agree with that. Exactly. I agree and with that. I, uh, I, everyone on the on this show is awesome. I, I want to see and talk to you more, play games with you. I think you all are great, John. I fucking love you, dude. I'm so you glad too, I bud. met you through Steve, and uh, you know, and and having you on TNT. And I would be happy to come back literally anytime. I, I'm happy to be here. This was awesome. You say that now, and, but uh, but 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 you will be asked again. Uh, yeah. So nice. so just. Be aware that 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 we will have you back on. And actually, uh, Derek, you're on G. Uh, next. Yeah, yeah. Um, I should be popping on if if all goes correctly. Yes. Uh, I should be popping on TNT next week, which would be good because August like said, 4th, right? I, next Wednesday. Yes, because yes, yes. I haven't I haven't spoken to like I said I don't think I've seen either you or Steve since PAX West 2019. If I've if I've got my dates right, so like <laughs> it's been a yeah. hot fucking minute. Um, it'll be good times. It'll be good times. But uh, yeah. yeah, no, we've. We've got a lot. Of, we got a lot of good shit coming up in the future. Of course, Derek will be on GVG next week, uh, and I am sure you can expect to see Ash back on here in the future. And of course, we got to have Steve back on. Steve, we love you, pal. Um, yes. And uh, I'd, I'd like to have Derek on as well. Yeah, I just I love the I, I love you guys. Period. Uh, have to Ash, work out having two Derek's on the show, but we'll yeah, find out. yeah, <laughs> that'll be that'll be fun. But uh, Ash, seriously, dude, we love you too, man. And uh, you're always welcome back here. You're part of our family. Um, and uh, please remember, uh, uh, if you made it through the podcast tonight, um, please remember that if you are suffering through mental trauma, there are resources out there to help you. Um, you uh, please uh, to call somebody, uh, get, do some uh, do some self care. The suicide, uh, the the national suicide hotline is there. Um, do whatever you can to get well, uh, because you are far more you are you are far more valuable here. Than anywhere else um we need you here uh and we need you to be taking care of yourself so please 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 can cannot stress that enough uh take care of yourselves look after each other and remember that kindness costs nothing we will see you next week